Welcome to a code report solution video for the 2021 advent of code day four. We're back at it again. This is the second time I'm recording this, but that's only because I solved this in roughly 30 minutes, but there was a bit of meandering, but the solution is going to be identical. Basically, I'm just going to try and tighten this up and do this video in about 10 to 15 minutes. It's a lot of fun, especially in an array language like APL. And with that, let's just hop into the problem description. So we're going to be playing bingo today. We're going to give be given a sequence of calls, and we're going to be given a number of uh, bingo boards. And basically what we need to do is based on the series of calls that we're going to get, we need to identify what is the winning board. What's the first board to either get a row of values all marked or a column of values all marked. And once we've identified that board, we basically just want to uh, find all of the non-marked values, aka the values that weren't called on that board, sum them up, and then multiply that value by the last value to be called that resulted in that board winning. So of the three boards, the third one in the test example is going to win. 24 is the last value called to make uh, a row or a column uh, be all marked. And then if we multiply that by the sum of all the ones that aren't sort of lit up here, 10, 16, 15, et cetera, we're going to get 45, 12. And problem B is very similar. Uh, so we're going to do that very quickly after we do the first part or part A. So let's hop over to ride and start parsing this problem. So we have our data loaded from our data file um, from the test data. We click data here. You can see that the first um, element in this sort of nested list here is the calls. So we can quickly parse this. It's uh, comma separated. So we want to do our comma uh, split, which is going to be not equals partition identity. I've explained this in prior advent of codes. It's just a fork that basically splits our data. If we do this, we're going to get a nested list of numbers. And then all we need to do is execute for each of these numbers, which is basically going to turn the string into a value, a numeric value. And so if we do this, we can call C, which is going to be basically calls. And if we do, you know, tally C, tally C, we got 27 values here. And you can see that if we do a three, nine reshape on C, that 24 is sort of, uh, you know, the 10th or 11th value to be called, or is that the 12th? Um, that's going to result in our winning board. So next thing we need to do, if we go look at data again, we can now uh, drop, do a one drop. So get rid of the first element. And we've now got basically all of the data that represent the three different boards. So if we split this, it'll show us we've got sort of the three boards here, but this is all in string format. So we need to convert this to values. Uh, there's probably a number of ways to do this. The way that I'm going to do it is by um, doing a space delimited split. So similar to the comma delimited split that we just did there. So we're binding the space uh, to the, you know, uh, not equals partition identity. And we're going to do that over our values uh, to get now um, our string split into the numbers. Then uh, we're going to reshape this so that we get, instead of a single nested list, we get basically a uh, matrix um, because we have three boards and we've got five rows plus sort of an empty one that uh, separates it. We're going to do a three, six reshape, I believe. And then we can do a catenate reduction, which is going to combine each of these five lists that make up a board into a single list. And then if we split this, it'll be a lot easier to see. Um, but we're now going to, on top of this, do a 5-5 five, five reshape uh, omega. And now from here, I think all we need to do is an execute over each of these numbers. And boom, we've got our boards 5-by-5 five five in a nested list. We will call this B uh, for boards, comment at the end. And also, too, let's call... Um, Let's call x. Uh, so if we choose the third from b, it's going to be sort of the winning board. So actually, maybe we'll go with w. Um, and just so that while we're building up how to check if this is the winning board, we're going to uh, use just a single board. And then we'll iterate over each of the boards um, you know, for our final solution. So we've got our calls, we've got our boards, and we're going to just work on our single board here. Uh, and let's do that. So the first thing we want to do is figure out how do we identify um, which values have been called. So you know, if we look at the first few, so a five take on our calls, it's 7, 4, 9, 5, 11. So if we take our board W, 
there's a algorithm or a glyph called membership and if we pass that seven it's basically going to light up uh, where the seven if it occurs on the board um, is with a boolean one and note that if we add uh, four for the first two values um, it's going to light up both of them so you can see that we've got a one down in the top corner and a one in or the bottom corner and the and a four up in the top corner so uh, what we need to do now is basically get the prefixes uh, of C. So if we just take, you know, do a five, five take on C, we can get the prefixes by doing a catenate scan, uh, which is going to look as follows. And so what we want to do basically is if we start just with this, if we do a W membership for each of these, is that going to work? We might need to compose this. Yeah, awesome. Um, and so basically this is showing you that uh, the progression of sort of the marks on the board. So we can actually get rid of uh, the, not the, yeah, the five take. This is going to kick out all the way to the end. Um, and this is sort of hard to see. So if we do a reshape, which once again is going to be, uh, let's just do a four, four reshape, which is still a tiny bit hard to see. You can see at one point, basically here, we have the row that is going to cause the winner. Um, all right, so that's great. So now that we have this, I guess the question is, is how do we determine that there's a winner? So let's go back to sort of the five um, take. And what we want is to do basically a column wise and a row wise reduction and check if any of those values are equal to five. So a uh, column wise reduction or row wise reduction is just like this. Um, and I guess we actually want to do this over each of these. Yeah. And uh, column wise reduction is just this. And we can catenate those both together by just doing that. Um, and it'll be a little bit easier to see if we do the 0 0.5 trick again. So perfect. You can see here now that after the first one, there's one row and one column with a uh, value marked. After the second one, for the rows, there's two rows, the first and the last. And for the columns, the last one already has two. So basically, we just need to check at what point are any of these equal to five. So we can delete this, uh, turn this into a five equals. And then um, I guess what we want is we can split this for the moment just to show you what that looks like. And then we need to delete the five take. And so at some point, you know, we switch to having a one in this row. So we want to do a logical or reduction. And if we get rid of that split now, you can see that uh, after the 12th uh, value, we get basically a winning card. Um, and this actually, because we have a five equals, can we do, we can turn this into an inner product. It doesn't save any characters. But that pattern, I think, should give you the same value. So pretty cool. Now we have basically, we will call this i for index. Um, and that is awesome. So now what do we need to do? We basically, from our prefixes, so our prefixes were the catenate scan c. So let's, let's call this p. So this is for... Uh, prefixes, if we do an index pick from our prefixes, this shows us the series of values or calls uh, that lead to the winning card. So a part of that is going to be isolating uh, the last one. So we're doing a uh, reverse first, and that's going to get us 24. So we need to multiply this number by the sum of all of the uncalled or unmarked numbers in our winning board. So W is our winning board. Uh, w membership of um, I pick P from our prefixes is going to give us this sequence, um, but the ones are all the ones that have been called. So we just need to knot this to get the ones that haven't been called. And then if we just do a multiplication by our original board, it's going to zero out all the values that have been called. And then we can ravel and do a plus reduction, AKA a sum to get our values. And so I believe 188 times uh, 24 is going to give us 45, 12, which is exactly what we want. So um, I guess we can sort of do 
that and um, I should I should I factor that out and then we want this so does that give us the answer yeah so that's our that is sort of our, our answer so let me skip ahead I'll put this in a function and we'll see what it sort of looks like all right, so we've put this in a function. I think this should work if we go, uh, we're actually, it's just gonna, yeah, we need to unhard code these. So we put, you know, alpha equals calls, omega equals board. And Then we replace C with alpha. I guess this is actually supposed to be P. Um, and then W should be omega. And then we should get the correct answer. So we messed that up because this was supposed to be alpha, not omega. Do that again. Now we get 4512. So really what we want is to change this to B, iterate over, and bind this together. And that should give us this. And so now the way to actually solve this is we want to modify this slightly such that what is our last value? Well, so really what we want to do is we want to prefix this with the index and then sort. Um, so if we do this, um, yeah, now what we can do is we can do a sort, which they don't have a primitive for, uh, and then we want the first one, so we want a one take and then we want a one drop. Well, one, one, one drop doesn't work. I guess we have to do a uh, last, which is a first reverse. And that gives us our answer. And the way to solve the second one is it basically asks you for the board that comes in last place. Um, so we just need to switch this from a, a ascending sort to a descending sort. And then you get your answer in 1924, which is consistent. So pretty, pretty awesome. If you ask me, uh, I had a lot of fun solving um, this problem. Uh, once again, sort of highlights the power of array programming languages and APL. If you have any questions, feel, leave, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And we'll see you in the next video.